Welcome back to the Two Minute Morning. Today I'm taking a look at the Denver Broncos and going over the five biggest challenges I think they will face in the upcoming 2021 season. But before we get into topic, just a quick question for those of you viewing, especially the Denver fans out there. How many touchdowns do you think Drew Locke will throw this year? Do you think he'll throw over 20, over 30, push for 40, or not even come close? Wherever your prediction is, comment down below. You'll kind of hear my prediction at the end. But getting straight into it, prediction number one is going to revolve around Drew Locke. The challenge for him is going to be living up to the demand of having to improve. The Broncos need a star quarterback this year. They've been given opportunity after opportunity to change their quarterback. They brought in Teddy Bridgewater as a subtle get your butt moving or we're going to kind of replace you with Teddy, but they've had other options. They could have traded for Rodgers. They could have traded for Deshaun Watson, and both of those are kind of iffy still. I still don't know what either of those two situations are going to resolve in, but they could have also as well went with a Justin Fields or so in the draft when they had the ninth overall pick and said, no, we're sticking with Drew Locke. He's our guy. And this year, while I do think he's been given the best opportunities had yet, you know, rookie year, he's barely gotten any starts, and then last year was just – there's a lot was going on, a lot. a lot of injuries, COVID, no OTAs, injuries on both defensive sides, so he couldn't rely on the defense and both on the offensive side. You know, his receivers, Jerry Judy had a butterfingers problem. I think he's going to improve now. This is his best year. He's going to have more reps than ever. He's going to have real practices, real mini camps, real OTAs, real training camps, real preseason games. He's just going to have a better feel of the NFL. So I do think he will have his best year yet, but still the challenge is going to be how good can he be? Can he actually take this possible Broncos team to the playoffs? Can he improve to the next level? You know, it doesn't have to be Peyton Manning, John Elway, Broncos style, but he does have to be a guy that could really possibly be the face of the future as far as the Broncos are willing to invest in him and make sure he's a franchise guy. It's going to be a challenge for him to prove it this year. Well, I think he can. There is a lot up against him, just being in a division of the Chiefs and so on and so forth. Not having the best history, having to prove pretty much everyone wrong, it's going to be a challenge. But we'll just have to see how it goes. Number two on the list is going to go to the division itself. Being in the AFC West is definitely one of the tougher divisions in the NFL. While the Broncos can hold their own in some standards, the elephant in the room, the Kansas City Chiefs, it's going to be very hard for me to see this Broncos team come out of this division on top. To me, I don't want to say that's impossible, but it's as close as it can be to impossible to me. And then a wild card spot, that's not easy either. Again, it's just I don't see them taking down Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Frank Clark, Chris Jones, Taco Charlton, Tyree Matthew. You know who the Chiefs are, all right? Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy. I just don't see the Broncos being able to top them. Unless Drew Locke has an MVP season, I just don't see that being in the realm of likelihood and possibility. Wild card is a little bit different, but even then, AFC West got some tough division rivals. Raiders, I'm not too worried about this year, but I still, you can't count them out. Derek Carr is still a well-rounded quarterback. Josh Jacobs is good. Darren Waller is an X-factor. I'm not big on them, but still, you can't count them out as a division rival. And the Chargers, I really like them this year as an up-and-coming team to make a wild-card spot as well. And I just don't know if I see the AFC West having three wild-card teams. While the Broncos can do it, and maybe I'll be wrong about the Chargers, and the Broncos will get second in the division... I just, it's going to be hard for me to bite off on right now. The Chargers, they just really like the matchup they have against the Broncos. Joy Bosa, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Derwin James coming back, Brandon Staley coming in. Again, I'll get into the Broncos. They got pros earlier. I'm not trying to act like the Broncos are an awful team, but I just think this is a really tough division this year that's going to be a challenge for them to go up against and compete with and be on par with. Number three on the list is going to be the O-line. There's perks to the O-line. You know, they addressed it. They addressed the guard position in the draft. They got Garrett Bowles. The biggest reason I'm really mentioning this is because the O-line wasn't great last year, and they really hope this year getting everyone healthy, they'd be fine. But the Jawan James loss is kind of a big loss. I mean, he's supposed to be a starting tackle. They made him a very high paid tackle for a reason. It just hurts to not have one of your starting tackles that you're really going to depend on be on this team. Again, I think the O-line will be better than it was last year, but it'll still be a challenge for this O-line to keep, you know, a brick wall status and protecting Drew Locke, making sure they can open up some gaps for Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. It's going to be tough this year for the O-line to really stand packed as a top-tier O-line. The Jawan James thing, it really bugs me. Again, I'm not trying to act like it's the worst O-line in the league now by any means. It will be better than it was last year, but... Just the Juwan James loss is going to make it a challenge for this team this year, at least in the very beginning, to really get used to things, find who could be the starting guy to replace him. I think there are going to be some growing pains and some kinks to work out in the beginning. 
but I do think that we'll get there. Number four on the list is going to be trying to stay healthy. There were a good amount of injuries last year. Noah Fant, Cortland Sutton. You know, Noah Fant wasn't season ending and Cortland Sutton was pretty early on, but he was still banged up for a lot of the year. Von Miller was out. You got to stay healthy if you want to try and win football games. And obviously the O-line last year was an issue as well with injuries. And obviously the Broncos aren't trying to get hurt by any means, but still we need to see this unit stay healthy if they want to try and be a serious competitive team that can make a playoff run. And again, like I said, they're not trying to get hurt by any means, but staying healthy is a challenge for this team, at least in recent history. I'm not saying this whole team has a long going on history of getting hurt, but in recent history, when considering this last year, you just can't repeat what you did last year where all your star and top guys are going down. You need a healthy lineup this year, which will be a challenge for any team to keep a completely healthy 53-man roster and a 22-man starting lineup. It will be difficult for any team, but the Broncos, you got to try and do it if you want to make a serious playoff run. And then the final challenge for this team is having chemistry and experience together. And I know that kind of sounds lame, but there's a, not, a lot of new players on this team and just a lot of guys coming back from injury that aren't used to playing with each other. No, Drew Locke, as much as, you know, Broncos fan, I believe him, he still hasn't had a whole lot of reps with this entire unit. Cortland Sutton's only, only been around for so long after being hurt last year. Jerry Judy's only going in his second year. No fans really young as well. Von Miller's coming back from injury. He's a veteran, that's for sure, but still playing with this new young unit. He doesn't have the most amount of reps. Bradley Chubb was kind of hurt here and there throughout the past seasons. As a whole healthy unit, you know, the new additions of Kyle Fuller, Patrick Sertain, and Ronald Darby, all three new guys in the secondary, they don't have the same chemistry that Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson might have together. Bryce Callaway, I mean, this unit just, or Callahan, excuse me. This unit, as much as I like it, it's going to lack chemistry at least in the beginning. Just even the veterans on this team, like I said, they haven't played together with this full roster. I think in time we're going to see some great secondaries in Patrick Sertain, Kareem Jackson, Justin Simmons, Ronald Darby, Kyle Fuller. Bryce Callahan, that's going to be one of the best, if not the best, secondary in the NFL. But day one, week one, I do think it'll be hard never really playing together before as a whole entire team. A secondary up front, like I said, you got Von Miller and Bradley Chubb who have experience together. But a full healthy 16-game season, it feels like it's been some time since they have been together like that. On the offensive side, you've already mentioned it. Horton Sutton, Jerry Judy really never played on the same terms. Along with Noah Fan, you never really had the same three together. You got Tim Patrick in there as well. Drew Locke, he's got to get used to this offensive line. Javante Williams, he's a new guy that might be replacing Melvin Gordon. I don't know. That might get awkward. There's got to be some chemistry that's got to be built there. Again, it will work out in the end. I do think this, I do think this Broncos team has a lot of potential, but in the beginning, chemistry does scare me with a lot of these guys being new and a lot of guys coming back and just a lot of them in general never playing together. We'll be fine, but it will be a challenge in the beginning that they will have to deal with. But as always, like I said, guys, comment down below. Do you agree or disagree with this list? Just to go over one more time, it's going to be Drew Locke having to prove it's going to be a challenge. The division itself is a challenge. The O-line is going to be tough to, you know, fix. The injuries is going to be tough to try and stay healthy. And then last is not having chemistry together right away. They're going to have to work on that. But as always, comment down below. Do you agree or disagree like I just said? And of course, referring back to the question of the day, how many touchdowns do you see Drew Locke throwing this year? The 30 threshold I do think can and will be broken. I think if he plays a full 17 games and he has a full healthy roster, I think he's going to push for 30. He's not going to get 40, but I could see 30 to 32 touchdowns for Drew Locke this year. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Two-minute warning.